We're back with another video on your screen. I hope everyone's having a great day. You know, I'm here with um some heavy, heavy fighters, man. From I used I grew up, man. I grew up like my early 20s watching them. And my boy uh Akbar, his uncle Al, and um shoot, always you know, staying relevant, always staying focused. And uh man, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan. They got a big show coming up on Friday, in Oklahoma City. And uh be hype, y'all. So tell me, man, like what is y'all um, you know, how y'all been, you know, in this past uh, you know, pandemic and uh staying relevant in the wrestling game. So how do you feel, man, about where wrestling at right now? And uh what made y'all want to become pro wrestlers? Well, I think the state of wrestling right now is very exciting. Uh, there's a lot going on. The pandemic has kind of slowed things down, but it's also caused promoters and, and talent to kind of think outside the box. And, uh, you know, it's, it's caused them to come up with concepts and ideas that were not used. So uh, it's interesting, man. Uh, I'm not one of those type of old guys that believes that all oh, wrestling should be the way it was before and all this other stuff. You know, it's it's, it's uh, it evolves, man. It evolves. You hear a lot of these guys, and people expect it to be the same way. You hear a lot of these guys talk about, uh, oh, well, these these kids nowadays they don't know what they're doing they're with all this flippity floppity stuff and. Man, I'm not one of those kind of guys. I believe that everything evolves. You know, music evolves. Sports evolves. Uh, movies evolve. You know, I, there's guys that prefer to watch Bonanza and Gunsmoke and black and white movies. They're old guys. That's what they grew up on. So when you show them something with a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, CGI, they can't get into it. Well, you know, it's, and, it's, and it makes sense. Well, same way in wrestling. You know, you can't sit there and say that the wrestling nowadays is the shit. Because when I started in 1987, there was guys from my era in 87 that were saying, or not from my era, but there were guys that started when I started. And there were guys older than us that were like guys that started in the 60s and 70s that were saying that what we were doing was too fast. Now you guys are just, just wrestling nowadays. Evolution. Then you go further back. You got guys like Luce, Vern Gagne. These guys started in the 40s and 50s. Same way. When they when 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 they when they would be involved in anything wrestling related in the 70s, they didn't want to hit the ropes because back like Luce, for example, he believed that hitting the ropes was silly. You don't run the ropes. Who does that? Who who who, who springboards back off of the off the ropes, you know? Because they didn't do that in the 40s and 50s. So I'm one of those guys, and I, I want it to be known. I'm one of those older guys. And yeah, I started in the 80s, but I believe everything evolved, and I love it. I absolutely love it. And, uh, of course, you know, I've, I've always been involved in music. So, I, you know, I could have made it bigger. I could have made it WWE. I could have made it, you know, I, I really could have, but I preferred to follow music. But it's funny, now that I decided to get back into it at, you know, Later, later in life, I'm 52 now, but I, when I started kind of getting back into it, which is about the time that I met you, Car Carlito, um, the older I get, the more, the more uh, bookings I'm getting. And, and it's because what's old is new and what's new is old, you know, however that thing goes. So I'm actually thrilled by how the business is evolved. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. How do you feel about that, Akbar? Ah, it's true, man. You hit the nail right in the coffee, man. I think um, I think wrestling evolves, man. It's like it's it's like a like like a circle. Everything runs everything runs its course, and then everything gets recycled again. And then it's like um like fashion. The same thing with fashion, man. Everything uh, you know, trends fades away, comes back. So I mean, that's just that's just in, you know the nature nature of the game. Hell yeah. So how active have um, y'all been during this pandemic? Like, y'all have had a lot of shows or, because um, I haven't really heard of a lot of shows popping up, like all over, you know, like, you know, Texas, Oklahoma. Yeah, um, during the pandemic, no, I mean, at least I, I, I wasn't active. I, I was not active at all, man. Um, just uh, not, e not even um, 
if anything, I was going to the gym maybe one. I mean, I started going four or five days and the gym shuts down. So, you know, three days a week, then two days a week, then one day, then no days a week. And then I think the pandemic has uh, played a major factor of, you know, of, you know, not doing anything. And that's not, you know, it's for everybody, you know, for all the wrestlers, for, you know, not only the, you know, not only the, the boys, it's uh, for everybody. So during the pandemic, no, I think I had two shows um, last year and that was uh, November and December. And I mean, I'm now that everything's better, I'm just getting the ball rolling again. I was, still, I was undecisive whether I wanted to like get back into it full, full speed or not, but man, I'm already in it. So once I'm in it, I mean, everything just starts rolling and it's too much, man. Right, right now I started off with a couple bookings now i got the whole june month we got the whole month of june um the whole month of june full july whole month is full august is already um halfway full so already three months in advance on bookings man no no break but that's how it is you, you decide to get in it and then before you know it they start calling you up man, that's a hell bro that's dope and mm -hmm. uh, um you know, the question for both of y'all and what, um, who was like the best wrestler you felt that or best talent that you've uh, competed with in the ring as a tag team, basically. I'll, I'll let Al start with that one. <laughs> well, you know, uh, also to touch on the uh, last question. Yeah. Same way. I, I didn't have a, I didn't have anything going on during the pandemic, but it's because I was being extra careful. I, I, you know, I didn't want to, I actually caught COVID and uh, luckily I wasn't sick, uh, but a day and I got both my shots and, uh, but no, I didn't, in terms of wrestling, I didn't do anything, uh, but I was busy with my music still, um, which I was perfectly content. Now, as far as opponents, man, that's a hard question because a lot of people ask me that. Who was the toughest opponent, the best opponent, you know, however you want to call it. You know, and, and man, there's so many, it's hard to mention. Like, if, if I had to say who were my best, who was my best individual opponent? Well, I mean, you know, there are guys, there's guys like indie stars like Pilot, for example, uh, Barrett Brown, that brought out the best in me when I was older, a lot older than them, making me do stuff that I really didn't think I could, I, I could do, you know? And, and so that, that's kind of a tough question to answer. Now, as a tag team, um, again, we've, we've worked with a lot of different individuals, but if, but if I had to point out one standout match so far, it would have to be against the Von Erich boys because of the involvement of their dad. Mm. When Kevin Von Erich got in there, you know, that big pop, you know, when he took the saw I me. Mean, so uh, that would have to be maybe the standout match, the one that I would say we got the most publicity out of. But as far as opponents, We've wrestled a lot of guys, and all the matches have turned out pretty decent, some better than others, but that would have to be the standout one. Man, there was legit, there had to be legit three, 4,000 people in that building that night. Man, that was a big ass show. And you, Akbar, how do you feel about same, that? Same thing. Tag team will be the, the Von Erics, just because everything, everything built behind it, packed house. I think uh, the match is on YouTube. And so, yeah. uh, Everything, man. I think we were, I think we were their first match in the states because I believe they were in Japan working. And we were the fir their first match in the states, and Kevin was involved. And then you know the whole uh, spot at the end where you know we get the claw, and Kevin gets the, the claw to Al, and people go crazy. I mean, I think that one that that one was special. So. Plus, plus, plus the history behind it. You got to remember that. You know, for a lot of people, there was a lot of nostalgia behind that match. Because even though Sandar Akbar wasn't physically there with us, um, Black Bart was. So a lot of the old timers, well, first of all, the, the young gloves got to see that second generation in the ring with my second generation, which would be you, uh, Akbar. But for the old timers, it's kind of like the Von Erich versus Devastation Incorporated Reborn all over it. You know that you. So it had a lot of little elements that added to the, to, the, to the story of the match. So I really enjoyed it. That's great. You know, like, that was one of the matches that I always remember, too. 
um, not actually being there live, but actually being able to um, see that uh, on Facebook, uh, like right after. And that was, that was great, man. Cause you know, I was probably, I felt like I was the only one riding with Akbar since <laughs> WA and um, you know, it bring, it brought, it brought some joy to me uh, knowing that, you know, I touched base with Akbar you know, man, you've been you've been riding with me since like since I first started, I think, right? Yeah. Like in the flea markets and the you know San Antonio uh you know small gyms and yeah. and everything. I think you were the only one, you know, wearing you know wearing the whole gear on the head. And I'm like, at first when I saw y'all, I was like, who the hell is that? But I, I like what I see. <laughs> I mean, so I must be doing some kind of a good job, you know. But I was green as 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 duck shit so <laughs> but we, Man, but we were still cool. good <laughs> you had that you had that uh you had that charisma that you were you you knew when to turn it on but you hardly you hardly talked at all and you had oh, yeah. um, i'm you still the same there. a little bit <laughs> you just stood there with like a blank stare on your face and i was like dude this dude's gonna be the shit right here yeah, yeah, yeah man. i'm still doing like i think we did uh me and uncle al we did uh you know a promo for uh phoenix international wrestling and um, if you if you look at it, I think they posted it already. It's just, it's the same look, same everything, man. I mean, I just I don't talk too much. Can I talk? Yeah, yes, I can talk. But I mean, that's just it. Just adds to the you know the whole the whole mystique and mysteriousness. And you know, hey, we're we're, we're talking um you know being an open book. Everybody knows the business. Is you know we're, we're at that age already where everybody knows what's going on. So with that being said, it's just like man, yeah, just just keeping that mystique. You know, you know, that whole that whole look, you know, but um, we did the promo um, this weekend and then I have the same look, same stare, same everything. I don't say much. Al's the one, you know, he's the mouthpiece. He's really great at it. So I just let him do his thing. I let him do his thing. I just, you know, take it in and, you know, but um, when it's time to go um, and we walk out the curtain and we get in the ring, man, it's, it's time to go. Like all that goes away. And, and that's what it is. But I, I, you know, I want to give that presence, man. It's just all about the presence to me. It's like, I don't want to, uh, you know, I'm not the type that just talks and talks and talks, you know, and they have those and those are good. You know, the people that can do that and the, you know, the, the guys that can do that, that's, that's great for them. For me, I don't know. I just like to, you know, be more laid back, calm, cool, collected, you know, have my presence felt with the look you know, and just my, my body language that way. And then, but when it's, you know, when I get into ring, it's a whole different story. You know, uh, you, you know, to add to that, um, first thing I noticed, you had that t-shirt on. I'm like, damn, you're probably the only one that still has one of those t-shirts. <laughs> oh, man, I got a, a two ride and die, man, all the way. I was like, he had the beard going on. I, I was about to induct him into the <laughs> he did he said he has a t-shirt i still got that t i got a t-shirt like that too is upstairs yeah. still got it yeah it was just... as a matter of fact i'm going to the gym with it today yeah same one yeah i might cut the sleeves though i have to i, have, I haven't done any no uh customization however you say it i haven't customized it yet but maybe should have saw months ago man i had long hair the beard was longer and, uh, you know, I trimmed it down when I cut my hair because, uh, you know, I recently had, uh, you know, my grandfather, he passed away a couple months ago. And uh, so I cut the hair and then I trimmed down the beard because my grandmother was in town. So, you know, I had, oh, okay. to, I had to get that look, man, for her. And, you know, mm -hmm. but now it's coming back a little bit more. So I'm just waiting. And then, shoot, seeing y'all coming back, uh, mm -hmm. just seeing that promo. That y'all cut on uh on Facebook, she got me got me hyped. I'm like hell yeah. Oh yeah, that's that, that's the one for Phoenix uh Phoenix International Wrestling. That's what I'm talking about with the whole well the whole blink <laughs> blink stare. Yeah yeah, it's just crazy man. It's just like, you know I learned that from Uncle Wow man. It's like and I seen him just be being in shows with him right. He's all we're all talking and you know joking around, but when it's like five minutes before a goal time, he gets so psyched in in his character, and I'm like oh man. So that's just, I don't know. I just got the ability now after all these years just to hit that switch. You know, I could be all smiling and everything. And I don't know, whenever whenever I have to hit that switch to Agbar Farad, it's like, bam. It's like, ah, the whole look and the whole, I mean, I just forget who I am. 